Hey everybody, it's Carrie from the Rapid City Public Library, your friendly neighborhood makerspace librarian. And in today's practical making, we are going to learn how to do block print aprons. I thought this one was super fun, and so uh, a couple of things to keep in mind as we go forward. Um, we actually have a lot of different colors of this type of ink at the library. So if this is a project that you end up really liking, you can do it to almost anything jeans, dish towels, um, all kinds of stuff. So feel free to come back into the library and um, you can use some of our other colors if it's something that you wanted to try or even add on to the apron that we sent home with you. Uh, the other thing that we have available in the makerspace is some actual stamp making kits. So if you like this but you would like a design that's a little bit more detailed or has curved lines instead of straight lines, we have uh, stamp pads and stamp carving tools that you can definitely use and take a look at as well. They are a lot of fun. Um, third thing, uh, you can use a lot of other things in your kitchen besides noodles, it turns out. Um, if you take a stalk of celery and cut it off towards the wide end, you get these cute little hearts. And you can also cut a potato in half and then kind of carve out really any kind of shape or image that you want. Um, so just something to keep in mind uh, if you enjoy this project. Let's take a look at what you got in your bags. So what do you have in your bags this time? Let's take a look. You're going to have um, a block. Uh, that's what your linguine is going to go on. You should have linguine noodles. Um, foam brush with a nice chisel tip. You're going to have your ink, your glue, and then of course your apron. Okay. So how to get started? Um, I put some of that blue paper, you should have one in your bag, underneath my fabric so that way if I print it won't print through to the other side or whatever it is that I happen to be stamping on. And we're basically going to take our linguine and figure out whatever kind of geometric pattern you want to use. They don't all have to go the same direction, they don't have to cover the same, like they don't have to cover all of your block. It's really up to you what kind of thing you want to use. I'm going to use a diagonal pattern. And so you're going to lay across your linguine noodle how you want it on the block. And whatever is overhang, you're just going to kind of snap off. And then using that chisel point on your foam brush, just put a pretty thick line of glue right where you want that noodle to go on your block. Your blocks are orange. Uh, the first one I printed just happened to be black. Um, you want to keep it pretty thick. Don't worry if it's too much because you can always go back in and scrape off the excess, but you definitely want to make sure that it's thick enough that your linguine noodle is not going to come off. And this is a weld bond glue. You can see it down in the corner there and it glues pretty much everything. Um, it works really well with our 3D printed objects, which our blocks are 3D printed. So again, if this is something that you enjoy and you wanted to try another block, um, it's just a couple bucks to print one of those. So I'm just going to keep adding my linguine. I'm trying to keep them spaced as evenly apart as I can. Um, and I'm going to cover up the top half of my block. And then after you have let that dry for one hour, we're going to bring that block. You can see that the glue has dried clear. And we're going to use our foam brush to dip in the paint. We're going to wipe off most of the excess. You just want a real thin layer of it on there. And you're just going to wipe it onto those noodles. Um, the reason you don't want a whole lot of thick is because it will go in between. And if you press hard enough, that will print on your block. And so what we're trying to do is to keep 
the paint mostly on the noodles and not the block. That way when you press it down, you're gonna get the imprint of the noodles and not what's in between. As long as you, you know, wipe off most of it, you should, you should be okay. All right, once all of the linguine noodles are covered, you're ready to make a print. So you're gonna decide how you want it to go. I'm gonna try this one diagonally. You're gonna set it on there and then press with the palm of your hand. That's gonna get the most even print and then lift it straight up with your fingers and then you're just gonna repeat. And this is not a perfect art form by any means of the imagination. I think this is nice because it ends up looking kind of rustic looking um, some of the lines are going to get paint all the way across. Some are going to be a little bit more faded. Um, that just gives it a personal touch, I think. I'll show you a couple more um, diagonals and then I'll do one other pattern to kind of just show what we can do. So this next one um, is going to make kind of a diamond pattern. And so you're going to use your block square instead of diagonal. Same type of thing though, um, we're going to use our palm to press it down straight, make sure that that gets um, a very even press, and then we'll use our fingers to lift it straight up from the cloth. And then we're going to cover it in ink again, wipe that off. Make sure to get a pretty even coating on your linguine noodles. And then I'm going to press it down, kind of mirror imaged from the one that I did at first. And then I'm going to do the same thing, mirroring both of them in the other direction. So instead of a left and right mirror, a top to bottom mirror. And again, these are just patterns that I thought would look cool. Um, you can do whatever pattern you want, whatever configuration you want. Um, chances are your block doesn't even look like mine. So um, it's really just kind of whatever geometry sort of appeals to you. I'll do two more prints here, kind of bring it all together. And there you go, block printing. All right guys, thanks for following along. I hope to see you back next month for another practical making. Um, one other thing that I'm gonna throw at you, um, next month I know that we are going to have one of our readers advisory videos talking about a couple of books that we have selected to show off from our craft section. So if you guys are ever looking for more crafts and practical making types of activities, um, take a look at our reader's advisory videos on here, um, to read or not to read. Um, I don't think we have any craft ones on there yet, but one will be showing up next month. So that's something you might want to check out too. Again, thank you, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye!